You're going to see some projectiles that are exploding in midair. And this, the second video we're going to show shows some, well, the videos are going to show beams that change direction in midair with an explosion. Part, uh, parts of the ejecta that come out and turn, they blow up and turn into two, and then each one of those blows up and turns into two more. So uh, both of those indicate the presence of explosives, and any presence of explosive completely puts the lie to the government story. There should be no explosives present if the government story is anywhere near true. However, these explosives, right in front of your eyes, that coupled with the fact that nine international scientists have already written a peer review paper exposing the fact that a very high, high tech, high explosive called nanothermite, much more explosive than dynamite or C4 or any of the standard explosives, uh, was present in, the, in all of the Trade Center dust, indicating tremendous quantities of that explosive. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and roll the video and uh, sit back and enjoy. This will be a treat for those of you who haven't seen it. It'll open your eyes. On the North Tower in Building 7. Uh, but I decided to look a little bit at the South Tower just to see what I could see. And so this next one is really just sort of a grab bag of things that are easily observable. And there's a lot going on. And it's just sort of a, a narration of what can be seen. In the process, I discovered something I had never noticed before, and I'll do a separate follow-up on that. And so this will be a two-part one here. Um, uh, first one is just called uh, South Tower Smoking Guns, and then a follow-up. This is the destruction of the South Tower of the World Trade Center, viewed from a helicopter to the south. This particular video clip is rich in details that call the official story into question. Notice the numerous explosions on the west side of the building above the impact point. As the top 30 floor section falls, it tips to the east. It starts off intact, but then it disintegrates in midair. Gravity alone could not cause the top section to disintegrate. When an object is in free fall, there are no internal stresses. It should have hit the ground in one piece, but it didn't. Some of the debris is clearly being accelerated by forces other than gravity. These effects can be caused by late firing explosives, which can produce a white smoke trail. White smoke, consisting of aluminum oxide, is a byproduct of the thermite reaction. While producing this video, I ran across one rocket projectile I had not seen commented on before. This one stopped midair and changed directions. Even taking perspective effects into account, this projectile lost one component of momentum and gained another. That requires an impulse. Note that the rocket trail does not point back to the building, but the point where the impulse occurred. Let's take it from the top. There's a lot going on. Watch for the smoking guns. In my earlier video entitled South Tower Smoking Guns, I pointed out a projectile near the end of the clip that moves to the right, then suddenly turns through a sharp angle and moves downward, at least from the perspective of the camera, all the while producing a trail of white smoke. For this object to radically change directions like this, it had to experience a sudden impulse. We know there was a large amount of unreacted nanothermite in the World Trade Center dust, that was confirmed in a paper published in the Chemical Physics Journal in April 2009. Thermite reactions produce aluminum oxide, which is visible as white smoke, and nanothermite is explosive. Nanothermite is stable when wet and can be literally painted onto steel beams. Nanothermite painted onto this chunk of material would explain the explosion producing the sudden change of direction, and it would also explain the white smoke trail. When we zoom in, we can see that the path zigzags, indicating multiple small explosions. Once I found this projectile, I looked for it in other videos. I found it in several videos from different angles, but when shown against the backdrop of the white debris cloud, it is very hard to see. This is another video from a very similar perspective to the first. In this shot, the trail can be seen to persist all the way down to the bottom of the collapse. We can learn several things from the behavior of this projectile. 
First, it is clear that this chunk carries explosive material with sufficient power to drastically change its momentum in a short outburst. Secondly, it is clear that the smoke we see is not general smoke from the fires and trained in the wake of a moving object. Since the smoke trail follows the object in all of its twists and turns, it is clear that the smoke is being emitted from the object itself. The most obvious interpretation, of course, is we are seeing the results of nanothermite burning and undergoing explosive outbursts. Once we see this clear example of an object trailing smoke generated on its surface, we can reinterpret what we are seeing elsewhere. There are lots of chunks of falling debris trailing smoke clouds. In many cases we can see long beams with smoke being emitted from the entire length of the beam. We no longer need to assume that this is smoke following in their wake. When we see white smoke that looks as though it's coming from the girders, it is reasonable to assume that we are in fact seeing smoke coming from material painted onto the girders themselves. When we see chunks that race ahead of the rest of the falling debris, as we see near the bottom of this view, we can reasonably interpret this as caused by explosive impulses that increase the speed of these objects, just as they change the direction of the one we've been studying. It is time to take off the blinders. We have not only chemically detected nanothermite in the World Trade Center dust, we are literally seeing nanothermite in action. Once our eyes are open, we can see it wherever we look. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was in the control room, so that's why it didn't get switched over right. But we're going to watch the next video, too. Uh, but you already saw that. This, this one has the exploding projectile that went up and disappeared. And we're going to have the uh, live call-in number going here, 288-4442. And right after we watch this video, we'll answer the phone. And we'd like to have people who have, uh, who support the official story. If there's anybody happens to watch this show that is a supporter of the official story, please call in and tell us why. Let her rip. Hi, I'm David Chandler, and I've been very involved with the 9-11 Truth Movement for several years now. Uh, a few years ago, when I first um, heard the, the prospect that the buildings in New York City were brought down with explosives. I was initially quite skeptical of this because I didn't see any um, compelling reason to see why this had to be the case. But what I did in response to this idea is I started looking more carefully at the videos and to see what I could see. Like, is there evidence that uh, where this is um, is there a strong reason to believe that this is actually what happened? And I started just on a qualitative basis, just looking at things, and then little by little I got more into measurement, and I brought my physics background into this. I, I'm a physics teacher. I've taught college level and high school physics. And uh, I bring that into my work, as you'll see as we go along. Um, what I've done is I've posted short video clips on YouTube, and what we're going to do on this DVD is string these together with commentary and to try to give the bigger picture. The little clips, um, each one is a, like a single theme, but um, I'm, I'm going to try and weave them together. This first clip is called North Tower Exploding, and all it is is an infinite loop just showing the North Tower coming down repeatedly. And in the process, I'll be narrating um, the things that I'm seeing, what you need to do is see what you're seeing and um, use this just as an opportunity to open your eyes a little bit. The starting point in science is observation. What you are seeing here is what happened to the North Tower of the World Trade Center, the second of three buildings to collapse on 9-11-2001. I use the word collapse, but words can be deceptive. What do you really see happening here? There's a tremendous amount of falling debris, but under the canopy of debris, do you see the rapid sequence of explosive ejections of material? Some of the jets have been clocked at over 100 miles per hour. 
I will call them explosions because it's hard to find other words that describe what we are seeing here. The explosions are not isolated and few. They are continuous and widespread. They move progressively down the faces of the building, keeping pace with the falling debris. Perhaps you can imagine a natural cause, but I can't. Notice that the explosions are occurring on multiple floors at once, over a wide zone, not in a floor-by-floor -floor sequence that might be explained by pancaking collapse. Notice there are explosions far below the point of collapse. Some are isolated and focused. These are often referred to as squibs and are commonly seen in controlled demolitions. However, this is not a standard controlled demolition. The building is being progressively destroyed from the top down by waves of explosions, creating a huge debris field. The destruction is in waves, not just in one wave. Most obvious is a rapid sequence of explosions near the visible corner of the building. But simultaneously we can see another wave of explosions much further down the face of the building under the canopy of falling debris. Notice that both waves of explosions progress down the face of the building nearly keeping pace with the falling debris just a few feet away. Slabs of concrete did not fall to the ground and smash to dust. There is almost no concrete in the rubble pile. Notice that the concrete is being forcefully ejected outward from the sides of the building already pulverized to dust. Notice that embedded in the dust clouds are huge girders and entire sections of steel framing that are being hurled out of the building. The horizontal speed of some of the girders has been clocked at over 70 miles per hour. Some of these girders impale themselves in the sides of neighboring buildings. Some landed as much as two football fields away from the base of the tower. What could hurl heavy girders with such force and give them such speed? Some people have suggested that the weight of the tower crushing down on the girders caused them to flex, and they sprung sideways by a spring action. But we are not seeing isolated jumping girders. We are seeing a major fraction of the mass of the building, steel, concrete, office furniture, and the remains of human beings, reduced to small pieces of rubble and fine dust, and being explosively ejected in all directions. Bone fragments are found on the roofs of adjacent buildings. The bones were not crushed in the falling mass, or they would have been trapped in the debris pile. They were pulverized along with everything else and blown out in all directions. The NIST investigators have claimed that the top section of the building above the plane impact point came down like a pile driver, crushing the undamaged lower section of the building all the way to the ground. The top section of the building is, however, noticeably absent. There is nothing above the ring of explosions except for a fountain of debris. Can you see a pile driver? It does not appear that the building is being crushed by anything. The waves of destruction and explosive ejections of material are occurring over a wide zone that continues all the way to the top of what remains of the building. The scientists at NIST did not model the collapse of the towers. Their analysis was gravely flawed in many ways, but the biggest flaw was that the scope of their investigation was artificially limited. They took their analysis only to the point of initiation of collapse, as though all that followed was inevitable and needed no explanation. The scope of their investigation was artificially limited to what might have happened or could have happened to begin the collapse. What they explicitly did not take into account is what actually happened. By limiting their investigation to the natural precursors of collapse, the plane damage and the fire, they ruled out from the start any possibility of discovering evidence of planned demolition. In other words, anything that occurred during the collapse itself, such as the evidence you are seeing here, was explicitly scripted out of the investigation. Any analytical model of the collapse, no matter how simple or how sophisticated, is a bad model and bad science if it does not come back full circle to explain the actual observations. What do you see? Howdy. Well, in the meantime, uh, before I get going again, uh, we've got a caller. So, caller, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Welcome to 9-11 was an inside job. Have you got a question? Yeah, I had a, I had a question that uh, for the last years, you, you, you guys have been getting on the TV show rehashing 
everything 